P-A-L. Year 2021 audited financial statement known as the IDA financial statement show that Nigeria was rated fifth on the list with 11.7 billion. Are you seeing it? 11.7 billion dollars IDA debt stock as of June 30. 2021 and yet the zoo came to tell you the same woman came to tell you that you have made it in the nigeria economy that under the leadership of the imposter that they have built the best economy the same way somebody in from europe in portugal you know told brainwash you that you are under his leadership the imposter they have grown the best economy in africa now in case if you are not aware let us actually find out what is ida financial you know ida um or international development association borrowers now let us actually find out uh, you know in, in, in very very uh, simple term you can say that ida is a, a savings account designed to help low income <laughs> you understand it is a savings account to divide this the, the, you know you know savings account you know that is meant to help low income to help low income ida it is called international development association international development association then when you put b there you comes borrowers list you know nigeria is in the in, in the 10 of the international development association borrowers list because they have very very small income very very small they are setting up all these things in order to help people with a very very small income now when we bring it and extend it to the world when we take it internationally we will say that ida lent money on on you know we will call it um you know we will call it they lend money to those countries who are not able to help themselves okay let me actually tell you the way it is IDA is one of is one of let me see where it is written IDA is one of the largest source of assistance for the world 74 poorest countries world 74 poorest countries and it and is the single largest source of donor funds for basic social services in these countries are you paying attention so nigeria is on the 10th list of those borrowing from those the monument for the world poorest country <laughs> nigeria is on the 10th list on the 10th of their list of the borrowers and when i came to tell you that this woman was lying to you that the statistics that they are always giving to you is always a lie that Nigeria made best economy because they will continue to lie to you because they don't give you you know financial analysis they don't give you economic analysis there is nobody who will come to analyze the market there is nobody who will come to analyze the economy of Nigeria how they have grown in GDP or in a, in a world trade market or in whichever way in a, a Wall Street they have there is nobody who will come to give you those you know statistics but that is the reason why somebody will wake up from one day one morning and the people cabals in Asorok will tell here go out there and report that we have the best we have you know managed to achieve the best economy in africa and they will run out and they will come and report it because they don't have shame they do not have any atom of shame let us continue to read this please let us continue to read the article that says nigeria is top 10 is the top 10 international development association borrowers the world poorest countries that are borrowing from IDA. 
the World Bank Physical 2021 audited uh, uh, auditor financial statement known as IDA financial statement showed that Nigeria was rated fifth, fourth, not even ten, fifth on the list with eleven billion dollars IDA debt stock as of June 30, 2021. However, the newly released World Bank Physical Year 2022 audited financial statement for IDA showed that Nigeria has moved to the fourth position. Oh, fourth, not even fifth. Fourth position on the list. With 13 billion. They borrowed again. They borrowed again on the June 30. Making from, you know, rising from 11.7 billion dollars now it has risen to 13 point 13 billion dollars which means roughly they have added to they have added uh, approximately 1.3 billion dollars uh, extra where is all this money going that is something you need to ask yourself they borrowed again in june from ida world poorest country where they borrow from now this shows that Nigeria accumulated about 1.3 billion. Yes, and my calculation was right. 1.3 billion IDA debt within a physical year. Within a physical year. <laughs> with, the, with the country taking over the fourth top debtors position from Vietnam. So now, Vietnam, our bongo go now. Vietnam is even in a higher position than nigeria when we talk about a failed state you know when you want to talk about the epitome of a failed state you talk about nigeria nigeria is a failed state it's no longer in the in the in, a, in the list of fragile state it is supposed to be placed in on the list of failed state you know they are using bribe to manipulate that list that's why you haven't found them on the list of a failed state of course okay now i think i got it wrong because fragile state simply means failed state they will not write it in capital letter to tell you that nigeria is a failed state in the list of fragile state nigeria is making top of the list there are the failed state that is what nigeria is they don't have shame world um, african best economy borrowing from ida now let me continue to read um the debt is different from the outstanding loan of 486 million dollars from world banks in a national bank for reconstruction and development now are you paying attention this 13 billion dollars is quite different from the previous debts that have been ringing like a bell this is another money 486 million plus 13 billion dollars how much is he going to give you as a borrow as a nation owing and somebody will tell you niger no the carry last somebody will come and tell you niger no the carry last your own that's nigeria from you know i don't know if you are one nigeria you don't owe you no longer own anything in nigeria because we haven't talked about the one they borrowed from china we are not yet talking about the debt they have with china let us continue to read maybe we might find it here or find extra vagantly them um, um debt that uh, extravagant debt that they have been taking let us actually see maybe it is here maybe it is here debt is okay this debt is different from the outstanding 486 million dollars from world banks international bank reconstruction and development which they will say to the world bank they are borrowing for reconstruction and development they will share it amongst themselves and those cabals in asorok top five countries on the list slightly reduce their ida debt stock except nigeria did you see it the top five countries they reduce their debt except nigeria including vietnam that vietnam is now higher than nigeria in those debt reduction of course you know that vietnam has been having financial crisis but now they are higher than nigeria in terms of debt reduction from ida's you know from ida now 
okay let's top countries on the list slightly reduce their ida debt stock except nigeria do you know why nigeria is on autopilot what they do is loot and burn loot and burn now we we expose them from looting and burning we are rudely interrupted that's the reason best known to them you know i want to not to be shaken i want to not to you know be surprised when we are rudely interrupted in this in this manner don't be interrupted whenever you see we are rudely interrupted in this manner because what you are seeing is that when we are stating giving you a factual data they will bring a constraint that it will drop the frame of our studio but it will never stop us i want you to continue sharing this video allow others to join Whatever I am telling you is the factual information about your, your, your those so-called one Nigeria. Northern Nigeria was bought by Britain. And they show that they were not able to benefit anything from this north. Because there is no resources coming out of their ground. They decided to extend it. And they say, let's now extend it to the west to the south part of Nigeria of that uh, sub-Saharan we don't call it Nigeria let's extend our nigger company to the sub-Saharan you know that southern part of that area in the sub-Saharan so that they will be able to solve this budget deficit because it was not even difficult for them to you know buy that northern Nigeria which is called the Niger company now they now extended their, their their you know extended it to the south which it is to use to solve the budget deficit why they did it through manipulation and deceit they did it through manipulation and deceit because they have come to terms with the northern Fulani. They, know, they don't even know about Hausa people. They knew about Fulani because Fulani was doing their crusade at that moment. Fulani was doing that. That was during the Fulani invasion to Hausa nation. During the Fulani emasculation of the Hausa land. That was the time they made this arrangement. Then in 1914, they saw that being with this Fulani, that they cannot uh, produce anything. They cannot, they don't even have initiative of doing anything. Why can't we propose an amalgamation telling you we are going to make you the giant of Africa that you will be the top of the list of Africa that is the manipulation we are, we are talking about through manipulation deceit that's how they were able to convince these two people to come together the north and the south they now brought them together and they now call all of them Niger company of course Britain knows that what they bought was the northern Nigeria it was in northern Nigeria called the Niger Company. That was what they bought. 800 and something thousand pounds, um, uh, pounds, British pounds. That was how much they purchased that area. And now they use lies and deceit to, you know, extend their, 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 this to the southern region of that part of sub-Saharan. And they did. And they handed it over to the tyrant which they claimed they were fighting. Remember they claimed that they were fighting tyranny of Fulani or tyranny of Fulani jihadists that these people were tyranny on the people they are leading which is those emirs, sultans they were oppressing the people of the north and the same people they now come to arrangement with them let us now extend this leadership this tyranny leadership to the north that is the reason why when they, when they may come to read um, a script that he doesn't know about he just google and found a script he doesn't know any history about nigeria he will come and read a script that britain is actually fighting for and for being tyrant on the Hausa people fighting the Sultan of Sokoto of who, who whichever whoever he was this article is to read for you 
about the Niger company and about how Britain took over Nigeria. He does not know these things. He just Google and find those documents and start reading. Of course, you will see from his analysis that he is just reading because of the reading sake. He does not know the, you know, he does not, he, he cannot even give you a full analysis of his, what he read. All these things we are, you know, after math that they presented to you to call it a history that they were actually against those tyranny of Fulani regime that was emasculating how sanation during that time it was not that was now when they came to agreement extend this your tyranny to the south that is the only way you will be able to put them down and step on their toes without them saying nothing we will give you power that you know when we solve this budget deficit for you to maintain it and for you to own it you need to be harsh on these people because if you are not harsh on them and don't even relent when you are harsh on them whoever that stand up to challenge you you must exterminate that person so that the rest of them will be afraid of you that is what they did during the time of slavery when they take you if you know if you want to challenge the slave master they will exterminate you for the other slaves to behave themselves that was what exactly what britain did during that time of uh, of solving the budget deficit of the northern you know zoological republic called nigeria today because you don't know the reason why we call it a british enclave it is a british enclave because britain knows the, that the full army you know the full army jihad they do not have they you know they don't have anything to do with anybody that is not a, you know their their type of muslim even if you are muslim if you are not their type of muslim you are an infidel they have to kill you and that was the reason why they were oppressing the houses they kill them in their high numbers kill their able-bodied men in order to take emasculate house land that's what they could not do that's when britain used their tricks use their manipulation use their you know lies and deceit to bring you together promising this big stomach big stomach greedy blacks leaders you know because what they know is to to eat they say he's half a big man big stomach black leaders during that uh, that time that you will have a biggest nation in africa you will be able to compete with the with even the european countries you will be able to compete with egypt you will be able to you know that is the manipulation and we will give you the giant of africa giant of failure that was what nigeria become giant of failure not giant of africa through deceit and manipulation they were able to get that amalgamation successful just to solve the budget deficit they found in the north where they saw that it was easy for them to buy so when we talk about britain owning only nigeria britain owned the northern nigeria when we talk about the southern nigeria it was actually please biko please biko um well, uh, 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 what do you call it in yoruba let's solve this let's come together it will give you a better nation that's the manipulation so if anybody is trying to tell you that hausa people or the northern nigeria is a uh, you know is an is 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 the owner of the land they are lying to you the houses were there before they they come there even from the 14th century from the 15th century during the time of the second and third crusade house people we have been emasculated they were there in that part of sub-saharan the southern region they knew a bit what they want because they have stupid leaders and that has been the, the problem that we've been having in africa countries leaders Nafuku, very easy to be manipulated they will allow you to come in in the name we are going to give you a big nation you will be in the obc in africa 
you call a black man hey o si lora millionaires lora emo ke fa ndi yoruba na akpo ndi nke fa ino vi you call a yoruba man emo alahaji emo emo alahaji kabi esi o or whatever i don't know how to say it when you call them that name people from the south of bovisi britain now give them that name call their leaders that name on our path isi we are going to make you the big people in africa now this is the condition of the beginners in africa they name you african giant and what does that giant signify african giant of failure that's what they gave to you and today you are feeling the spikes of that failure that they have given to you now if we can continue to read india which is still first on the list reduced its ida stock to 22 billion dollars in the previous fiscal year to 19 Point seven billion dollars followed by bangladesh bangladesh from 18.1 to 18 billion now bangladesh they even reduce their own but nigeria could not reduce their own because it is an autopilot what they want is they went ahead to borrow more because even if pito be you know when you are saying pito be pito be pito be pito be pito be banye di afu kogat oge eje eze pele kwele the only thing Peter Obi will be able to achieve is to gazette some, you know, be will be able to do some changes in the constitution and all that. That is the only thing he might be able to achieve if eventually he goes there. Because they want to cripple the nation that when Peter Obi goes there, he will not even see money to do anything. Of course, you know, these politicians, they don't think, they don't do calculation. They don't do plus and minus. I don't know if they don't consult people who read comics or people who read economy or, you know, to advise them. If Nigeria is in this debt, and this debt is what you are going to be inheriting. This is a federal night. Federal. You are going to be inheriting this debt. How are you going to service this debt and be able to do a service delivery to your nation? Will you be able to service this debt while delivering services to the nation, building infrastructure, building power, maybe bring introduce green energy to Nigeria? Will you be able to achieve all those things? These are the things that he's supposed to be asking himself, but of course he will not because the only thing they always think about, let's get into that power first. When we get to the bridge, we cross it. That's what they will always to begin to tell you. Now, when Peter B. go there, his regime might be worse than the regime of this um, imposter in Asorok. Because there will be no money to fight insurgency. They have stolen it all. There will be no money to build your hospital. They have stolen it all. There will be no money to build your road. They have stolen it all. Nigeria will be worse than how it is today because there will be no money. They don't ask themselves these questions. All they want, power. Power mongers is a problem. Power monging is the problem of a black man. Power monging. Let us just go into power. And when you go there, you are helpless. And you, you know, you, of course, you, you don't have a right to come. You cannot complain. You said you will do it. They voted for you. You don't have the right to complain other than delivering that thing which you say you are going to deliver. Because not coming to give a motivational speech and the other one will come and tell you it is my turn. The other one will come and tell you, you to make a video how we are going to rescue our nation. Hi, <laughs> these people. You know, whenever I begin to see, because I have, I foresaw what is to befall Nigeria. I foresaw what is to become of Nigeria in 2023. And that is the reason why the first ever video I made about Biafra, it is on my YouTube page. I said that Biafra will get their independence in 2023. Or, Bia, or no, Biafra case will be settled around march or may 2023 i did it 
If you go to my YouTube page, you check the date. Not those who will come and tell you because probably they might have seen that video. Because they know that when we give our directive, when we say something, it is something that is to come. It is something that will happen. If you go to Judge Money Blog Africa, you go there, you go to the oldest video made about Biafra. I did it in my office. I said that Biafra will come. Now, Biafra will be settled around March or May. I don't understand. I, I can't remember it. But I might look for it and share the link. I foresaw this in 2021 from around January. How what Nigeria will become of Nigeria comes 2023. Because now, if you as Igbo presidency, because they know that you, you know, if it is to follow the statistics, if it is to be like, to be factual about the leading figure in politics today, you will say Peter B, Peter B will give all of these people Florida's victory if nothing is manipulated in Nigeria. If we are to give a factual data, with regards to this uh, um, um, policy shenanigan and the election uh, shenanigan, he will give the Nigeria uh, those cabals, those all these people, Florence victory. But the what? What is now the thing that is going to meet? They know that and they want to lose the country to zero. They want to bring the country to the to recession. They want to bring inflation to the you know the highest percentage of the inflation into the country, so that when Igbo man inherited that thing, Igbo man will be saying you know Igbo people will be saying Peter B is the worst. Peter B is the worst because if you look at the statistics, I am not saying this that that means that the previous the previous administration debt was on eleven billion. The current administration debt is on hundred billion dollars. Hundred okay in twenty twenty one it was on hundred billion dollars. Now coupled with IDA, we are the world poorest country. Call for help. This is where Nigeria has subjected has been subjected to go and borrow IDA. That is where the world poorest countries go for borrowing now nigeria could not service even that borrowing that bring them to the fifth of those highest borrowers in ida are you are you are you listening to it in ida that bangladesh is even you know servicing their own bangladesh is servicing their own but nigeria is not now when all these things you look at it from 11 billion from the previous administration to 100 billion or you say from 11 okay sorry let's say it is 11 i think it is 11 trillion 11 trillion 11 trillion naira then 2020 i think 2021 the the, the new administration escalated it to 41 trillion naira which is i think equivalent to 100 billion dollars 100 billion dollars if my memory still serves me well now inflation rate from i think uh, inflation rate was uh, i think nine percent it escalated to 18 percent in the current administration by the time they finish this their uh, uh, imposterous uh, cabals in Asorok, it might be climbing to 25 percent which means nigeria might not be having currency again it might be climbing nigeria might not be having currency again there is no prices to goods um uh, the the goods and the or the commodities that you have in nigeria there is no regulated prices it causes inflation and the diluting causes inflation because now the country will now have to print the money that they don't they are not supposed to print they will print it it causes inflation as well now all these things it is something that this government that that is this cabals that you saw that as a government is going to be doing 
so that when your Peter B goes there, Peter B gets a bear. Well, Peter B will be the worst because there will be no money there. Okwandi Bogaba, there he will make magic. I was in Andy Bone, no magic. It is time on Andy Bunu get no magic. Because Peter B will give all of them flawless victory if indeed there will be election. But Kokeke just slam your lay boot ya. Kokeke just slam your lay boot ya. And will you tell me now that all these Fulani, if they finish stealing the whole money of Nigeria and now they now give Nigeria up to Peter B? Let's see what he's going to do. Peter B, no matter how stingy you might be, no matter how you know manageable or ma uh, manager you can be when it comes to finance. You will not be able to rescue a nation with a debt. This is IMF debt. 400 and something million plus 4, um, 4 plus 13 billion dollars. 13 billion dollars from IDA. How are you going to? From, I, we never see how much they have borrowed from China. We have not seen that one, the Chinese loan. That are the ones we haven't been exposed to. Maybe China will come and start a nine years old in Nigeria, the way they are doing in Zambia today. China nine years old can conduct on Zambia. Onu na amaro. China na akubo na Zambia. China na anuzin the Zambia. China na mess everything na Zambia. Fawa jule everywhere. China is holding many government business in Zambia, controlling it. We haven't seen those. Now, what if you, as Peter B, you get to that position, and all of a sudden, boom, bang, <laughs> every loan now will become, they will now, you know, show you the real statistics of what these cabals have stolen from IMF from chinese bank from uh, ida they will now unveil it what are you going to do and you will say in the next 80 years that you are going to be there you will not be able to service that loan except if you are going to privatize all the government you know businesses or uh, just like if nigeria still have airline Nigeria is going to have a, if they have a line, they will say, um, we are calling China, you can manage Nigeria Airways, or you can manage Nigeria um, um, road uh, transportation, or you can manage uh, Nigeria, you know, every solid government or state owned, you know, businesses, they will use it to rescue themselves from all this debt that they are still stealing. They will take a debt to go and buy cars for Niger Republic. They are taking money from IDA. For you to imagine the evil, you will take money from IDA to go and service, to go and buy vehicle for Fulani. IDA to go and buy, to go and buy cars for Fulani. Is it not an iron? So, let me finalize the reading. So, maybe I will see something more. The bank say Nigeria debt remains sustainable. <laughs> I'll bet vulnerable and costly. Okay, now, let's read this thing properly. Let's read this thing properly, please. Nigeria has the highest IDA debt Afri uh, in Africa. In Africa, the highest IDA debt, debt of the poorest countries in Africa, but Nigeria have the highest IDA, the highest of it. Now, the bank said Nigeria debt remains sustainable, albeit vulnerable and costly, especially due to large and growing financing from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Okay? Okay? However, the Washington-based global financial institution added that the country's debt was also at risk of becoming unsustainable in the event of micro-physical shocks. Are you paying attention? 
The bank further expressed concern over the nation's cost of debt servicing, which, according to it, disrupted public investment and the critical services, critical service delivery spending. Economics have also raised concern over the rising debt profile of the federal government, the physical policy partner and African tax leader of PWC, Mr. Taiwo Oyedele, express his agreement with the World Bank on the highest cost of debt service. Servicing. <laughs> Remember that the interest rate when the when the recession is hitting the world, the interest rate of this debt is is super hiking. It's been hiked to the highest number or amount of it. You know, he said, "I agree with the World Bank, although the debt to GDP ratio is not too high. If you think about the debt service cost of uh, to revenue ratio." It is already over 70%. That's when you know it's costly. Nigeria borrows at double digit. And even when we borrow in dollars, the rates are very high. The rates are very high, which is the interest rate. <laughs> of course, you, you are high risk. You are called or you are seen to be high risk lender. The interest rate is been skyrocketing high, and that is the reason why IMF is holding the whole of Africa in the palm of their uh, hands. In the palm of their hands, in their arm, they are holding you in the palm of their arm because now they know when Africa comes to IMF to take loan, they are seen to be high risk lenders. If you want to bring this in a very, very simple word as a high risk lender, it simply means that these are people who are super corrupt, who have super corrupt, you know, activities, uh, you know, super corrupt leadership that they might be borrowing in order for them to take it for themselves. They are not borrowing to in invest it where it is going to yield more income for them to service the borrowing. They will not. They will rather steal it all and pass it through to the next regime. Because once they go out of the power, no one will hold them accountable for all their atrocities and the criminality they have done or committed. No one will hold them accountable because the next person is coming to steal their own. So it is Aka Felaka. Okay, you know, Aka Felaka. That is the reason why you sing in Nigeria. If I that is the same thing. The reason why you will continue to sing that song. That God must give it to you. Should give it to you straight to your hands. Because if he give your leaders to give you, that one is a past. Do you hear people singing Walakagi Zikenamo from America or Europe? Do you hear people singing that type of song? No, you can't hear people singing that type of song. You can only sing it in Africa and in Nigeria. Because, you know, the song I am talking about, they are calling on God to give them the blessing directly. Don't give it through the government. Don't give it through any individual. Because if you give it to them, they will not give it to the, they will not deliver the service. That is service delivery. In a very very simple word. So now let me finalize finalize the reading. Nigeria borrows at in double digit. Remember, and the the rates are very high because they are high risk lenders. If the rate that they will use to give Britain, now let me um, explain the rate further. If the rate of borrowing, if now you are take you are trying to attract one million dollars from IMF. And the U.S. is coming to take one million dollars from IMF. If they give U.S. at this uh, at a ten percent interest rate, ten percent interest rate, they will give you, of course, sixteen percent interest rate. Are you paying attention? They will give you extra six percent interest rate because you are high risk. High risk. The money, the insurance, they are going to pay for you. 
for the one they are giving you is higher than the one they are going to pay for us because they know that us are held accountable for every power they hold but in nigeria in africa they are not held accountable that is the reason why they call you high risk high risk lender the interest rates have to go up so that whenever you are servicing the debt whichever one they got they will know that at least we have it in in a big amount we will be able to use it to service the insurance and now i don't even know if africa know that there is insurance to those debts they are taking from imf in case if they default now okay i don't know that is not the reason why i am i am not going to elaborate on that much but let us continue Put all of all of that together and you can easily say to yourself that even though our debt to gdp ratio is very low our cost of borrowing is unsustainable because it is very high and therefore make it very costly a former deputy governor of the central bank of nigeria and former presidential candidate kinsley mohalu also criticized the increasing borrowing tendency of the government urging the official to reconsider other ways of generating revenue or for the country <laughs> according to mohalu it was also not reasonable to borrow for infrastructural development as the government could expand the public private partnership option for such development in a document by the Director General of the Debt Management Office, Patient Oniha, recently obtained by our correspondent, the DMO stated that high debt level would often lead to high debt services, of course, and the affect investment in infrastructure. When you borrow, you haven't you are not even servicing the one you borrow, you come back again. The interest rate will now become double. It will now become double because now you are you are higher risk now because you are still on debt, you are borrowing more. You are higher risk more. The IMF now, this is why Africa will never move forward. Let me stop with the reading and let me bring down this because i think uh, i am done i am done with it let me bring it down i should be done with it now this is the real reason why africa will never grow forward move forward because when it comes to imf imf will continue to give you knowing that they they have something that they will hold against you you know they will knowing that their plans is to make sure that africa does not move forward because if if it is not their plan to make sure that africa does not move forward because they know that they are corruptible leaders of africa they go to imf except especially corruptible leaders of nigeria they go to imf to take that money for their pocket, not to use it to do anything. IMF, you, you will see that he didn't use that money wisely. They will come again, you give them another one with a higher interest rate. How then do you expect them to pay that money? Because they know that through doing that, Africa will remain in abject poverty. That they will never finish their debt until thy kingdom come that is the plan nigeria will remain in abject poverty they will never finish their debt until thy kingdom come that is the plan i am going to be moving out of the financial market or out of the economy nigeria economic talks about that nigeria but to close it i am going to inform you p2b except if you are you know if you eventually make it if 2023 eventually comes you know according to the way it is being propagated all over the place if it eventually comes <laughs> and you eventually you know make it to that position which you know you are clamoring that you will fix this you will do that you will do this 
without knowing that what you are going there to do is a suicide you are going on a suicide mission that i can assure you it is a suicide you know and that is the reason why everywhere in the world is promoting you to go there because you want power you know every time we want power we want power now power is there take it into the west when there is the economic crisis you know when there is a you know terrorism uh, insecurity highest you know crisis all over the place in the, in every sector in nigeria there is crisis they will tell you Peter, will be my power today take this power so that now let's see what you will make of it every day they will say they are they, they want to feel the sense of inclusion they want to feel the sense of inclusion they will include you but in a very very bad way that is the reason why we are calling for referendum we are not calling for any other thing we are calling for referendum so that people will decide if they are still part of this amalgamation to solve the budget deficit of the fallen but the people who does not understand and will never understand our stand where we are standing and exactly what we are trying to achieve they will continue to talk jargon they will continue to talk rubbish and sabotage what we are fighting for or what we are fighting to achieve because you do not understand the economic challenges and the you know economic crisis that you are facing under nigeria as a contraption you will never understand the you know the security challenges you are facing under nigeria as a, con a contraption you will never understand these things you will never understand the democracy crisis because your democracy is under crisis you don't have freedom of speech you don't even have freedom to vote and your vote will be counted if you don't have it they will rig it just like they have started do you do you INEC or INEC or whatever they call it they have started rigging the election by counting the voters in the north to be higher than the voters in the south and yet when Peter will be go there you will see me a um, uh, crowd coming to support him and Lai Mohammed will come and say this crowd are photoshopped <laughs> have you seen that letters that those crowd are photoshop that was coming to visit and uh, see p that they are photoshop you know what does this tell you guys what does that tell you they are doing it so that they will rig the election so if you know anything if you still have time in your brain if you still have space in your brain all you need to start advocating for is referendum referendum All you need to start advocating for is referendum because referendum is the only way you are going to achieve what you are trying to achieve but does not mean that we are you know we are not politicians we are, are you know we have not been told to talk about whether we are supporting any candidate or we are not we are not told and we still remain that we are not politicians but in event of this i can you know my own personal opinion i will say we are not supposed to talk about the boycott of election we are not until you come from the leadership if you come from the leadership it means that the diplomatic move they are making is where it resulted to but before it comes from the leadership we are not allowed to say there will be no election in the other land there will be no this and this and that that person is a criminal they are attracting the likes of tinubu to come and bribe them and we are following that move and it is it is getting close it is the getting close the attraction is growing it is getting close the talks is going and that talks that is going we are monitoring that talks to see where it is going to come to end all we need is a revolution a revolution 
And that revolution must come in 2023. When this election period comes, that will trigger revolution from the federal to the bottom or from the you know it will trigger revolution from the federal this time around the people that will be leading the revolution might be your politicians it might be your politician <laughs> after this that is the reason why you know we are not I'm not in support of any calling of election boycott in Biafra land and except if the leadership says so then I will know that they have a good reason to say so but otherwise any other person that is coming to tell you that they have you know they have this tendency of making themselves available for people like shaky you know people like uh, you know take this one million dollar you know they have this tendency of making themselves available for them to be noticed and that's what they are doing i am going to leave this one here now coming to this it is a shame you know it is a shame now when we talk about uh, you know it is a big shame that when we every day they say autopilot the people are now you know autopilot every day pardon me every day you hear autopilot autopilot people are now union look at <laughs> look at it let me actually bring this one to this side so that you will see autopilot autopilot lead meeting i want you to look at this this is where your very uh, much spokesperson nude um nelly nude shara um joko told you that they are in autopilot meeting in Finland and you look at it <laughs> you look at it you remember those those criminals that claim that they went to Finland parliament I don't know because I know that people forget so easily those criminals that claim that they went to Finland parliament you take that, that one sitting, sitting down, down. You, you go to, to that, that film they acted there, there. that shenanigan they acted there, there. telling you that they went, went to Finland parliament. parliament you check all of, almost all of them and some, some borrowed personnel even though they are not up to them there, but there are some, some borrowed personnel just, just to stand there to stand here as if there, there is something they are only probably like five or six in number there those are the people who are seeing to make sure that all this money that people are donating to this criminal organization called autopilot group of criminals you know that they are siphoning those money and sharing it amongst themselves that when it comes to where they say a fraudulent representation these people will come and they will take a picture and they will send to you look at them the autopilot this is the number of the autopilot that has been making noise every time they come to social media they tell you that they are the spokesperson so these are the people that is in Finland beacon is this the amount of Nibo that is in Finland? At least if I don't know Nibo that is in Finland, I know up to 20. From my side, Rigodi. I know up to 20, but this ones are not even up to 20. So this shows that these are Biafans that are in Finland. Or these are um, our, our Tosu Biafans that are in Finland. Is this the amount they are so what does this tell you when these people are making their move they are not articulative they are not articulative because when you look at their move you will ask yourself 
So this is exactly the people. All these few people are the ones that has been exploiting you one way or the other. Exploiting you and stealing from you one way or the other. And at the end of the day, they will come and tell you, autopilot, we are the moving train, autopilot, you know, that we are the spokesperson. So these are the number of the people that is made up of autopilot where the leader is. These are the people supposed to, supporting him.